Hello everyone. Welcome to Brilliant Bangers. In today's session, we will be going through the chapter the risks in banking business. So what are the risks in banking business? This is what we will be dealing in this chapter. So all the risks are related to the assets and liabilities of the banks. That is the deposits which is the liability and the loans or the money lent by the bank which is the asset of the bank. So banking business lines are many and varied. Commercial banking, corporate finance, retail banking, trading and investment banking and various financial services from the main business lines of the banks. Within each lines of business, there are subgroups and each groups contain a variety of financial activities. Banks clients may vary from retail consumer segment to the mid market corporate or the large corporate financial institutions. So as for the product clients, the product lines also varies from the client segments. Normally, the lending products are the short and the long term loan with specified repayments demand loans and various other processes like the bill purchase, the bill, bill discounting and cash credit etc. Also deposit products that may vary from different segments and needs also offers market products such as the fixed income, secu fixed income deposits, the securities, the shares, forex trading and derivatives like the standard swaps and the options. From the risk management point of view, banking business lines may be grouped broadly under the three heads like the banking book, the trading book and the off balance sheet exposure. So let's discuss all these points in detail. The banking book. The banking book includes all advances deposits, borrowings, which are usually used for commercial and the retail banking operations. In this, all assets and liabilities in the banking books are normally held until the maturity and the accrual system of accounting is applied on top. The banking book is mainly exposed to liquidity risk, the interest rate risk, the default or the credit risk and the operational risk. What we have to say is that all assets and liabilities in the banking book have some of the have a common characters, characteristics like they are normally held until the maturity of the uh, product. The interest rate is always on an accrual system. They are not subject to mark to market exercise. They attract capital charge on credit risk and not on the market risk. So what is a trading book? Coming back to the banking book, what are the types of risk that is that a banking book is mainly exposed? It is mainly exposed to the liquidity risk, the interest rate risk, the credit risk and the operational risk. Now coming to the trading book, the trading book includes all the assets that are marketable. That is, they can be traded in the market. Contrary to the characteristic of the assets and the liabilities held in the bank, the trading book assets have the fo following characters. They are normally not held until maturity and positions are liquidated in the market after holding the assets for a certain period. The mark to market system is followed and the difference between the market price and the book value is taken to profit and loss account. The trading book mostly comprises of fixed income securities, equities, foreign exchange holdings, commodities held by the bank on its own account, etc. The positions in the trading books are normally held for liquidating them in the market after holding the investments for a certain period. The difference between the market price realized and the book value is accounted for as a profit or loss as for the trading book. The trading book is mainly exposed to the market risk, 
market liquidity risk the credit risk and the operational risk so two things are common in the bank book and the trading book that is a credit risk and the operational risk is a common thing in both the books coming to off balance sheet exposures what are off balance sheet exposures off balance sheet exposures are contingent in nature where bank issue guarantees committed or backup credit lines the letter of credits etc bank fees payment obligations contingent upon some expense some events sorry these contingencies adversely affect the revenue generation of the banks these exposures are also called as the non fund based exposures or credit facilities so off balance sheet exposures are contingent in nature where banks issue guarantees committed or backed up credit lines the letter of credits and banks also face payment obligations contingent upon the some even these contingencies adversely affect the revenue generation of the banks banks may also have some contingent assets for example a bank may have purchased insurance to protect against the certain negative events here in this condition banks are the beneficiaries subject to certain contingencies derivatives are off balance sheet market exposures they may derivatives are off balance sheet market exposures they may be swaps futures borrowed contracts foreign currency contracts options etc contingent exposure may become a fund based exposure also such exposures may become a part of the banking book or the trading book depending upon the nature of the off balance sheet exposure therefore off balance sheet exposures may have liquidity risk interest rate risk market risk or the credit risk and the operational risk in this condition so what is the risk in an off balance sheet exposure the different type of risks are the liquidity the interest rate risk the market risk default risk or the credit risk and the operations so we have heard about all the type of risk till now let's let's uh, discuss in detail or see what are the different type of risks in bank and let's learn in detail so from the earlier discussion we have uh, come to know that the major risk in banking business or banking risk are the liquidity risk the interest rate risk market risk the credit risk and the operation risk so going to the liquidity risk the liquidity risk refers to the possibility that a financial institution may not have enough liquid assets to meet its short term financial obligations as a come due in other words it's a risk that a bank may not be able to fund its operations and meet its financial commitments promptly banks typically face liquidity risk because they operate on a fractional reserve system this means that only a fraction of their total deposits is held in cash and the rest is invested in a longer term assets such as the loans and the securities so if a significant number of depositors suddenly want to withdraw their funds or if there is a sudden need for cash for these customers for example due to some unforeseen economic downturns or the financial market disruptions the bank may face liquidity challenges so to manage this liquidity risk the banks use various strategies including holding an adequate level of liquid assets maintaining the line of credit with other financial institution and closely monitoring and forecasting their cash flows regulatory authorities also set liquidity requirements to ensure that the banks have sufficient buffer to handle the potential liquidity challenges so what are the different type of liquidity risk different type of liquidity risk can be called the funding risk the time risk and the call risk what is a funding risk it refers to the risk that a financial institution may not be able to obtain necessary funds to meet its obligations 
at a reasonable cost. Example, suppose a bank heavily relies on a short-term deposit to fund its long-term loans. In that case, if there is a sudden loss of confidence in the bank, the depositor may come back to withdraw their funds quickly, which can lead to a funding shortfall for the bank, making it difficult to meet its loan commitments and potentially cause a liquidity crisis. What is it? Time risk. It is also known as a maturity risk because it is calculated in the period of the maturity. So time risk is also known as a maturity risk and is associated with the mismatch of the maturity of assets and liabilities because the deposits can be a short term deposit and vice versa the loans or the debts that are be being given to customers are for a longer period. So it arises when the maturity of the bank's assets differs significantly from the maturity of its liabilities. Uh, as an example, you can take a scenario where a bank has lent some money for 30 years. That is normally whenever a housing loan is being given, it is given for 30 years, but has financed this lending by issuing short term certificates or deposits with maturities of one year. If interest rate rise significantly during the year, when the certificates of deposits mature, the bank may face challenge in rolling out the debt as favorable rates. This is the time risk as the maturity mismatch can result in the interest rate risk and the funding difficulties. So what is a call risk? Call risk is also known as a reinvestment risk, which we will be also learning again in, in the interest rate risk course. Call risk is also known as a reinvestment risk. It is a risk that the issuer of the callable bond will redeem its it before the maturity, which can happen if the interest rates decline and the issuer decides to refinance the debt at a lower interest rate. Suppose an investor holds a callable bond with a 10% coupon rate and the prevailing interest rate in the market drops to 5%. The issuer may decide to call the bond and issue new debt at a lower rate, leaving the bondholder with the challenge of reinvesting this the proceeds of a lower interest rate, which exposes the investor to call risk, as the expected cash flow from the bond may be reinvested at a less favorable rate. So, understanding and managing these risks are crucial for the financial institutions to maintain the stability and safeguard the interests of their stakeholders risk management practices and regulatory guidelines and also the prudent financial strategies are employed to mitigate all these liquidity risks. So what is an interest rate risk? Interest rate risk is the risk that changes in the interest rates which will, which will be adversely affecting the value of an investment, particularly the fixed income securities. This risk can impact various financial ins instruments, including bonds, loans, and other debt instruments. Interest rate movements can affect the prices of these instruments, influencing their market value and consequently the return that the investors receive. Let's take an example. Suppose you are an investor who owns a 10 year bond with a face value of 1000 rupees and a fixed annual coupon rate of 4%, which means you will receive a 40 rupees interest payment every year. So the current interest rate in the market is also 4%. In the first scenario or in the first case, when there is no interest rate change, in, the, in this case, the interest rate remains constant at 4% throughout the 10 years. You will receive rupees 40 in interest payments annually and at the end of each year the bonds market value remains stable because coupon value is not changing. So after 10 years you receive the face value of the bond back that is rupees 1000 back. Taking in a second example where there is an increase in a interest rate. In this scenario let's say that the, uh, after a few years the interest rate of the market rises to 6%. However, the bond value or the 
interest rate on the bond or the coupon rate is fixed at 4%, it becomes let, less attractive to new investors who can obtain higher yields or high uh, yields on higher bonds. But you still receive the same rupees 40 in interest payments annually as the coupon rate is fixed. However, the market value of your bond declines because new bonds with higher coupon rates are now available. In that case, if you decide to sell your bond before the maturity, you might receive less than its face value, that is lesser than rupees 1000. Whenever there is a decrease in the interest rate, in this scenario, we say that after a few years, the general interest rate in the market decreases to 2%. But the bond issued to you says that you will be getting a 4% interest annually. In that condition you are receiving rupees 40 per year. The market value of a bond increases because its fixed 4% rate is higher than that of the prevailing interest rate of the market. So what happens? Automatically the face value of the bond increases if you are willing to sell the bond. In these three scenarios, the interest rate risk becomes evident. I think you are able to understand what is the three, what the three scenarios are explaining. The interest rate risk becomes evident in the fluctuations of the bonds market value based on the changes in prevailing interest rates. Investors holding the fixed rate bonds are exposed to the potential impact of the interest rate movements on the value of their investments. This is an oversimplified example. And in reality, other factors such as the bond's duration, yield to maturity, and the shape of the yield curve would also come into play when accessing the interest rate risk. So, what are the different types of interest rate risk that are there? One is a gap or the mismatch risk. The other is the basis risk, the yield curve risk, as said earlier, the embedded option risk the reinvestment risk which we have uh, discussed in the previous risk itself and the net interest portion risk. So what is a gap or a mismatch risk? It refers to the potential of losses due to imbalances or gaps in the maturity or repricing of the assets and liabilities. It occurs when the interest rate sensitivity of the assets and liability is not aligned. For example, if a bank has more liabilities repricing in the short term than that of the for example, if a bank has more liabilities repricing in the short term than that of the assets and the interest rate rises, the cost of the liabilities may increase more quickly than the income from the assets. So what happens when the bank has more liabilities that is maturing? Then that of the assets. What is a liability? All deposits. What is a asset? All debts. So that becomes a problem. That becomes a gap or a mismatch in the maturity of the period. And whenever there is a maturity, there is a change in interest rate. If the interest rate increases, the bank has to give a higher interest rate, wherein the bank will not be able to take a higher interest rate in the debt already given. What is a basis risk? Basis risk arises when there is a mismatch between the interest rates or prices of two related financial instruments. This can occur when the rates or prices of the instruments are supposed to move in tandem but diverge. For example, a bank may issue loans with variable interest rates linked to the benchmark rate, but its funding cost may be tied to the different benchmark. If these benchmarks move differently, the basis risk arises. The yield curve risk is also known as the interest rate curve risk, which refers to the risk that shifts to the overall shape or slope of the yield curve and will adversely impact the value of the fixed income securities. The yield curve is a graphical representation of the interest rate across different maturities and it typically slopes upwards due to the time value of money. Yield curve risk arises when the shape changes, affects the 
prices of bonds with different maturities some of the example of the yield curve risk are suppose an investor holds a portfolio of bonds with a duration match to a specific segment of the yield curve if the yield curve steepens that is a long term interest rate rises more than that of the short term rates the value of the long term bonds in the portfolio may decline more than that of the short term bonds leading to the losses but on the other hand if the yield curve is flattening in this case when the long term rates rise less than that of the short term rates the portfolios of the long term bonds may outperform the short term bonds and investors and financial institutions need to consider yield curve risk when managing the fixed income portfolios to ensure that their duration exposures aligns with that of the risk tolerance and the market expectations what is an embedded option risk it is associated with the financial institution instruments that have embedded options such as a call or put option these options can affect the value and cash flows of the instrument for example mortgage backed securities may have embedded prepayment option if interest rate falls homeowners are more likely to refinance leading to early prepayments and affecting the cash flow of the securities we have already discussed the reinvestment risk so i am not explaining it again uh, you can just go back uh, about 2 to 3 minutes in the previous slide and uh, you can go through it what is a net interest position risk net interest position risk is also not as a net interest income risk or a net interest margin risk which refers to a risk that changes in the interest rates and will impact the profitability of a financial institution due to the imbalances in its interest earning and the interest paying assets and liabilities it is a concern for banks and other financial institutions that engage in maturity transformation borrowing short term and lending long term for example considering a bank that borrows money for by offering short term deposits and then lends that money out for longer periods through mortgages or any other loans in this cases if the interest rate increases the cost of the short term de deposits may increase potentially skewing the bank's net interest margin that is the difference between the interest income and the interest expenses conversely if interest rate falls the bank may face challenges in maintaining profitability as the interest income from existing term loan decreases but the interest expenses on short term deposits remain relatively stable managing net interest position risk always highly above finding a balance between the maturities and the interest rate sensitivity of a financial institutions assets and liabilities so both the yield curve risk and the net position risk highlight the importance of the understanding and managing interest rate dynamics in financial markets especially for institutions heavily involved in fixed income securities and lending activities effective risk management involves strategies such as the interest rate hedging duration matching and the diversification to mitigate the impact of the interest rate fluctuations on the financial performance to summarize the interest rate risk we can say that where banks have more earnings than paying liabilities interest rate risk arises when the market interest rate adjusts downward such banks will experience a reduction in interest rate risk as the market interest rate declines and in interest increases when the interest rate rises so what is a market risk the market risk arises when a bank is unable to conclude a large transaction in a particular instrument near the current market price 
and market risk is the risk of adverse deviations of the mark to market value of trading portfolio due to the market movements during the period of holding this results from adverse movements of the market prices or interest rate instruments equities commodities and currencies it is also referred to as a price the two the term market risk applies to the part of the interest rate risk which affects the price of the interest rate instruments pricing risk for all other assets or the portfolio including the commodities like gold that is held in the trading book of the bank and the foreign currency risk so what is a forex risk and the market liquidity risk forex risk which is also termed as an exchange risk is the risk that a bank may suffer losses as a result of the adverse exchange rate movements during a period in which it has an open position either spot or forward or a combination of both in a individual foreign currency and what is a market liquidity risk it arises when a bank is unable to conclude a last transaction in a particular instrument where the current market price or near the current market price coming to credit risk credit risk which is also known as the default risk in this credit risk is most simply defined as the potential of a bank borrower or the counterparty fail to meet its obligations in accordance with the agreed terms for most banks loans and corporate bonds are the largest and the most obvious source of credit risk coming to the two types of credit risk there is a counterparty risk and the country risk so credit risk this is defined as a potential of the bank borrower or the counterparty to fail to meet its obligations so whenever there is a failure to in meeting the obligations it is a credit risk what is a counterparty risk this is the variant of the credit risk and is related to non performance of the trading partners due to the counter parties refusal or the inability to perform normal perform mm. normally such defaults happen in call money borrowing between the banks since it is purely unsecured the counter party risk is generally viewed as a transient financial risk associated with the trading rather than the standard credit risk so what is a country risk this is also a type of credit risk where a non performance by the borrower or a counterparty arises due to constraints of a restrictions imposed by a country in this case the reasons for non performance are external factors on which the borrower or the counterparty has no control at all because it is an another country so what is an operational risk the word that we have heard countless number of times the basel committee on banking supervision bcbs defines operational risk as the risk of losing or as the risk of loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes people and system or from external event so operational risk is the risk of loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes so any processes that happens inside and from the people inside and outside and by the systems or from any total external events so strategic risk and reputation risk so is the nature of operations and are not covered under the definition of operation risk by the bcps the strategic risk and reputation risk for nature it is like that of a operation risk but it is not covered under the definition of operation risk by bcps so what are the four different types of operation risk they are the transaction risk the compliance risk 
the strategic strategic risk and the reputational risk which can be mentioned separately the transaction risk is a risk arising from fraud both the internal and external failed business processes and the inability to maintain businesses continuity and manage information this is what is called as a transaction risk so whenever there is a failed business process or whenever there is a inability to maintain any business there happens some kind of fraud it might be internal or external this is a transaction risk what is a compliance risk it is a risk of legal or regulatory sanction wherein the financial loss or reputation loss that a bank may suffer as a result of its failure to comply to the rules and regulations that has been put up by the board of the bank or to comply with any or all applicable laws regulations code of conduct and standards of good practice it is also called the integrity risk since a bank's reputation is closely linked to the adherence to principles of integrity and the fair dealing we have earlier mentioned that uh, strategic risk and reputational risk falls outside the definition of the operational risk given by the bcbs but let's go through or have an idea of the strategic and the reputational risk strategic risk is the risk arising from the adverse business decisions improper implementation of decisions or lack of responsiveness to the industry changes this risk is a function of a compatibility of an organization's strategic goals the business strategy is developed to achieve these goals the resources deployed against these goals and the quality of implementation in short this risk calls for whether there is a gap between the strategy aimed at and implement if there is a gap then the strategy is not implemented at the letter and spirit so what is that mean? it is a risk arising from the adverse business decisions taken by the board automatically the decisions are taken by the board and improper improper implementation of those decisions by the staff and after the improper implementation when there is lack of response on all these things automatically the strategy or the plan that is made for the success of the business becomes a failure so this is a strategic risk what is a reputational risk this is the type of risk that is arising from the negative public opinion which can expose the institution to litigation financial loss or a decline in a customer base so come uh, coming to the model risk model risk are designed to predict values of variables for which it is specially or specifically designed value of a given variable would depend upon one or more parameters which influence the value of the given variable model risk is defined as a gap between the value predicted through model and the value actually observed in case of pricing models the profit and loss may be affected due to the model in case of risk measurement models the risk assessment may be may also get affected the model risk usually arises because of the following reasons incorrect assumptions or assumptions which have become non relevant ignoring one or more parameters usually for simplification or for some practical reasons errors of a statistical technique or insufficient data points and finally the incorrect judgment while dealing with the outliers these are some of the type of the model risk and finally to the climate risk the last risk or one of the most important risk which we have to deal with the banks have to deal with climate risk relates to the or refers to the potential 
stress that may arise from the climate change or from the effort to mitigate climate change which or their related impact and the economic and financial constitutions it can impact on the financial sector through two broad channels the physical and the transition risk so what is a physical risk it is a risk which arises from the changes in weather and climate that impact the economy they can be categorized as the acute risks such as a flood heat waves landslides etc and the transition risk arises when the or from the process of adjustment towards a low carbon economy this can have a significant impact on the economy so with that we end the chapter any questions on this session you can feel free to comment and if you have any doubts you may ask it through the comment section your feedback on the session is also valuable to us do not forget to like share and subscribe our channel the brilliant bankers until next time this is nishan signing off thank you and have a great day jai